Hope everyone is able to see my screen. Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you. Yes, we can see. Yeah. So at the end of this exercise today, I hope everyone should be able to replicate the step when they estimate water budget component, specifically from GDS data as just for as a summary. Uh, from what we have done yesterday, we have downloaded data from GLDAS, but also the remote sensing product. So for this exercise today, we will only be using GLDAS dataset. And the main reason is because we are lacking some of the data set for remote sensing. As I demonstrated yesterday, that the data for terrestrial water storage is put to decommission, is put on the end on 26th of September. So we'll not be able to estimate water budget component using the remote sensing product, which is MODIS and data from IMAG, which is a precipitation data. So as long as we have the data for GELDAS, which is full and complete, we can be able to estimate water budget component uh, using GELDAS data. But there is a very small uncertainty when you're using GELDAS data and remote sensing data. It's just a matter of choice, but it also depends on the uh, resolution you want but it's also it depend on you the, uh, the size of your study area so some of the prerequisites of this exercise is you must have GLDAS data already downloaded in your computer which is a monthly data which is evapotranspiration precipitation runoff and the total water storage but also you must have a QGIS installed on your computer and the recommended is you have to install QGIS stable uh, versions of which it is well known that these versions are, have cleared all the bugs. So also you, have, you must have Limpopo liver uh, basin share files saved on your computer. We'll share a link to, to these share files. But also you must have some very basic knowledge of using QJS, but, but it is not as such important because we will be learning just a very minor processes that is, is easier to capture. So we will start by importing data to QGIS platform. Then as you remember yesterday, we downloaded the data that have different data units. So the second step is to convert all the data uh, to millimeter per month so that we can be able to perform uh, some calculation in a systematic manner. And after that, we'll be able to estimate seasonal water budget components. We have four components, which is precipitation, uh, evapotranspiration transpiration runoff and terrestrial water storage but also the aim is to be able to compare this water budget component uh, for dry season and for wet season specifically for the Popo river basin and sub basin so this is just a summary of how can you import data to qgis for those who are not familiar with the qgis it is very easy it's just you can drag and drop but also these are the formulas that we'll be using when converting units for the GLDAS data. So as you remember, we downloaded data for precipitation and the evapotranspiration, of which both of these two data have uh, in kilogram per meter square per second. So we have to convert this data into millimeter per month. So one kilogram uh, per meter square is equivalent to one a millimeter. So we'll only be focusing on converting the seconds to uh, to a month wise. So we will take the data for precipitation and evapotranspiration and multiply by 36,000 times 24 times the specific number of that month. So if it is a December 2019, uh, the total number of days in in December 20, uh, 2019 was 31. So we will multiply the uh, precipitation data for December 2019 times at 36,000 times 24 uh, times 31. And at that point, we'll be able to uh, convert that data into millimeter per month. So the data for runoff was in kilogram per meter square, but it was accumulated over three hours interval. So to convert this data into a millimeter per month, as I said, one kilogram per meter square is equivalent to one millimeter. So we'll only be focusing on converting these three hours up to months. So first, we have to convert these three hours uh, into days by multiplying by eight. We get uh, a day's coverage, then we will multiply by specific number of days in that month. So if we, we are converting the data for December 2019, we will be multiplying by 31 uh, to get runoff 
which is in millimeter per month. So terrestrial water storage is only 10 millimeter per month. So we will not be converting it. So maybe I can start now to demonstrate practically how can we do this in future years. So I hope everyone see a QJS canvas. This is a QJS canvas. And this place here is, I can say it is yeah, georeferenced. It is well referenced uh, to the extent that anything you put here and you see visualization here, it is actually representative of what it, is, it looks like on the AC surface. So this is a layer panel. All the layer you add on QJS will be up here on this side. And in this bar is a processing toolbox. All the processes that is available in QJS, you can find over here. So the, the first step is to import the data. And the very easier method of importing data to QJS in drag and drop. So I will drag my data and drop to QJS. Or you can opt to add uh, using, uh, I can say, a formal process by navigating to layer, then you can add layer. Then you can add vector layer, raster layer, and a lot of layers. But for our case, all our data are images, so they are raster layers. So I'll go and add raster layer. So I will browse from where I save my data set. So I start by adding evapotranspiration transpiration data, which is this one. And uh, they are a total of eight data, which both represent data for wet season and for dry season. So I will add all of them. Just I'll select all of them and open. Then if I click add, you will see the data appeared. But one of the very important process to follow and uh, developing any map, you have to ensure that your data is well projected. So it's a very easy step to, to understand if your data has the light projection is by importing base maps and uh, comparing if your data fall uh, on the light place as it appeared on the surface. So I'll just add the base map using a plugin. It is known as Quick Map Service. It provides a functionality to add base maps like Google Maps, Bin Maps, uh, and so forth. So I'll add a base map which is from Google. So I'll simply add Google Map. So as you can see over here, we deal with Limpopo River Basin, and this data represents the bounding box of Limpopo River Basin. So as you can see, this is Botswana. So I hereby maybe uh, declare that this data has a proper projection, but you can opt to reproject this data to the very light projection uh, just to remove uncertainties when calculating uh, other parameters like areas, lengths, and so forth. So I'll add also a, a data for a share file for Limpopo River Basin so that we can be very sure but this data follow in the Limpopo River Basin. So I'll just use a very same procedure. But for this case, I will add vector layer because Limpopo River Basin is a shape file. So I will add a shape file for the Limpopo River Basin. So I will add sub basins for Limpopo. Then I will navigate this to the top so that it can be seen on the map. So as you can see, this is a shape file for Limpopo River Basin. Maybe I will change the symbology so that we can be able to, to visualize it well. So to change the symbology, just you can double click on this layer or you can light click and go to properties. So I just change to symbology to outline. So I'll just visualize the Limpopo River Basin as outlines. So as you can see here, the, the, the shape file for Limpopo River Basin. So the next step is to convert all the data sets into millimeter per month. So this is a data for evapotranspiration. And as I said, this data in kilogram per meter square per second. So we will be converting to millimeter per month. So one kilogram per meter 
per meter square is equivalent to one millimeter. So we don't that be converting second to, to months. So the only process that we'll be using is last calculator. Last calculator is just very similar like other calculators, but it just deals in with a special data. So I'll go and open a uh, last calculator by navigating on uh, on Lester, then select last calculator. Then from here I'll be able to learn every kind of calculations. So I'll start by uh, converting evapotranspiration data for December 2019. So I'll select and double click it and it will appear in the expression box. This is where you can write your formula so that you, uh, last calculator can execute that formula to produce the result. So as I said, to convert this data, I have to multiply by 36,000. So I'll multiply by 36,000 times 24 times specific number of months, uh, which was in December 2019, which was uh, 31. So after after the, after this, maybe I can select output layer so that the results from this layer, which will be converted into millimeter, millimeter per month, will be saved directly into uh, specify the repository. So I will specify my repository by navigating to this uh, to this tab. Maybe I, I'll be saving in the desktop. This is tildas. And this is the data for, for evapotrans, evapotranspiration. And this is the data for uh, December 2019. So I will click save. And make sure you, uh, you, you check this box, add results to a project so that after the last calculator uh, successfully executed this process, you will be seeing the results on, uh, on QGIS Canvas. So I will click OK. And as you can see here on the layer panel, there is another new layer that was produced. And uh, even if you see on the map, there is such a different, you can just realign this layer panel so that you can, you can be able to see well, maybe I can go and convert another data for January 2020. So the procedure very similar. Just double click on one to convert by 36,000 times 24 times the specific number of days that was in January 2020, which is 31. I will select a directory where I want my output to be saved. So I just put the name and then save. Make sure you check this box so that you can see the result. So I can see these are the results for January 2020. So just for simple comparison, if you see this data, it is in already in millimeter per month. And if you can compare the default data, which is this one for January, you can see there's a difference in value. So this is data that is already converted. So you can use this data to visualize, to be able to get just uh, a baseline information on how evapotranspiration are changing, uh, maybe in January, in December. So the procedure is same, you just as we have to manipulate symbology of these layers by right click on and specific layer and go to, to properties. Then after that, you can go to lender type and select single band fuel color so that you can be able to change to a variety of band colors you want. So next, if you have to classify the layers so that you can be able to see that, but you have first to select the color lamp you want your data to be visualized on, maybe I can select the LEDs. And when you click classify, you'll be able to see your values. And when you apply, you will be able to see the effect, but the effect is not revealed just because this layer is, it's, it's, it was uh, down the other layer, it is a mask of other layers. So you have to realign this layer. If you want to see the layer on this canvas, you have to put it at the top so that you can be able to see. Otherwise you have to reduce transparency so that you can see layers that is bent to other layer. So you can just learn a, uh, just a simple analysis. So if we try to, uh, to learn how to analyze visually as the evapotranspiration data specifically for December 2019, you can come to a conclusion that uh, at the south of Limpopo River Basin, there is almost a higher evapotranspiration rate than, than the north of Limpopo River Basin. So that is just to get a baseline information. But as I said uh, yesterday, 
gender state have almost one degree of resolution. That's why you see all these big boxes. So this data is not recommended to be used over the, a small a liver basing. So because it will result to a much higher uncertainty. For example, imagine this was was the the basin that we are dealing with. So as you can see, these boxes are very huge. There is a very uh, low resolution on this data, so it is not recommended to use over over small over small area. So the next procedure is is to convert as a kind of data. I think from now you are you can be able to convert data for evapotranspiration, transpiration, but also for precipitation procedure are very similar because data for evapotranspiration transpiration and uh, data for evapotranspiration transpiration and precipitation both are in kilogram per meter square per second. So the procedure for converting data for evapotranspiration transpiration and precipitation is very similar. So I'll go and show how can you convert a uh, line of data because it, uh, it is a bit tricky. It has very different methodology of converting. So I'll I will remove all these layers because I have already done all this conversion, but for the sake of time, you will be converting this. I'll put this as your exercise so you'll be able to convert so that you can inhale well how to do conversions. So next I'll go to add line of data so that we can initiate conversion. So the procedure is the same, I will add list, last areas. So for this time, I'll add data for line of. So I like data for Lanoff, both are in wet season and dry season. So as you can see, this is a Lanoff data. I will put my share file on the top so that we can be able to see well and visualize well. So we have to convert Lanoff data uh, into millimeter per month, but this data are in kilogram per meter square, which is are basically already in millimeter, but this data is accumulated over three hours. But we want our data to be in a monthly temporal scale. So to do this is very easy, as long as we have 24 hours in a day, and this data have a temporal scale of three hours, so we have to multiply this data by eight to get 24, and then multiply by specific number of days in a specific month. So I'll go to Lasta, then Lasta calculator. I will start with data for December 2019. So just a double click on the data to be able to appear on the expression box. Then I will multiply this data by eight to be able to get a, tempo, a daily temporal scale. Then I will multiply by specific number of months that was in December 2019, which was 31. So I'll select the output layer, but this data is for learn off. and it is for December 2019. Uh, so I make sure this box is checked so that you can see our uh, results. And then I will click. Okay, so as you can see, it is already executed and this is the result. So if, any, if you compare the data for December 2019, which was a lead and millimeter per month, and the default data for December 2019, which is in kilo, which is in millimeter, I can say, but it's accumulated over three hours, you can get uh, this value. So you can tweak SI unit whatever you want, as long as make sure you, you don't uh, overlay uh, the procedures. So I can maybe visualize this data by putting color so that we can be able to visualize and uh, uh, we analyze this data uh, by using maybe eyes, very simple analysis, very simple visualization so that you can get yourself familiar on how learn of a change in over limpo polyper basin. So I just changing the color by navigating to lender type when select single band field of colors. Then I've just select, you can just change your color lamp, whatever you want. Maybe for now I want blues. Then when you click apply, you will see uh, an effect on the map. So you can do a very uh, quick visualization here. So for example, uh, maybe there is a very minor variation in surface runoff over the entire Limpopo River Basin. So this is how you can just visualize a map. So if you want to produce a map from where you can 
go and, and produce a map in very simple steps. But our aim is to get water budget components. We have to get the total volume of water that is available for the Bolivar Basin. We have to get uh, to get total amount of water that uh, is produced by precipitation of the Bolivar Basin. Only we have to, to understand how much of water is lost the uh, flow evaporation transpiration process. We have to understand how much of water is flowing over the Bolivar Basin. Is that our main? aim so we will not be producing map but we'll be producing absolute values which is data set so this is how to convert data for lano so you can convert this data uh, this data for other months on your exercise by just using the same formula it just used to convert for december 2019 maybe i can i can convert also data for january just for for you to be able to capture where so this is the data for january i'll just double click it and multiply by eight to be able to get a daily temporal coverage. Say so now we multiply by a specific number of days that was in January 2020, which is 31. I will select the directory we want to save. Then I will rename the output file. Then after that, I'll click OK. And as you can see, this is the output. So up to now, because I have already converted to this data, so I will go to the next step. But for, as I said, the data for the rest of water storage is already in millimeter per month. So there is no need of doing core conversion. So for now I'll go direct and start demonstrating how can you use, uh, how can you estimate seasonal water budget components that is for dry season and wet season. So I will remove all these layer and add layer that is converted already. All, all the added layers that will be using have to be in millimeter per month. So I will just add the layers that are in millimeter per month. I have already converted the area. So I'll add the converted data. So I'll start by adding data for Evapor transpiration, this as a converted data. So I add all of them. Then I'll go and add data for precipitation. Then I'll go and add data for storm water, Lano for Lano. Then I will finalize by adding terrestrial water storage data so the QJS canvas so the next procedure is we want to, to to get only only one file for each season so if we want to get data for evapotranspiration we have to do some calculation so that we we must have only one file that represent evapotranspiration for wet season only one file representing evapotranspiration for dry season the same for precipitation runoff and the list of water storage so we have to undertake some of the calculations so for for this case now we have for example for evapotranspiration we have data that have monthly temporal scale so we have in order to find uh evapotranspiration data for wet season you have to to find the summation uh summation of data that is evapotranspiration data for all four months so we will use the same tool last calculator so i'll navigate to last calculator so we start with evapotranspiration. So I will add all data that fall in wet season, and that is evapotranspiration, so that I can get a summation for evapotranspiration in wet season. And I can do that by just adding. So I'll start by adding data for evapotranspiration for December 2019. Then I will add evapotranspiration data for January 2020. Then for February 2020, then March 2020. So if I learn this expression, I'll be able to get data for evapotranspiration, specifically for wet season. I will select the output file and I can rename this maybe as a sum. Then the lady converted, then yield does. And this is the data for evapotranspiration. 
at this is a evapotranspiration data for for wet season. So I'll save it. Make sure you check this box. But if you, you do not check this box, your result not appear on the QGIS canvas. We'll be able to, to, to import it again manually. So I'll just click OK. So I have already have only one file that is accumulated evapotranspiration for wet season. So I'll go and find evapotranspiration for dry season by finding a summation for all evapotranspiration, monthly evapotranspiration for all months that fall in dry season, which is from June. So I'll multiply data, evapotranspiration data for June. Then I will add data for June, July, August, August and September. Then I will select output file or directory. This is evapotranspiration and it is for dry season. Then I will save. So I will repeat the same procedures to find the summation of four seasonal water budget component for uh, runoff, terrestrial water storage, and the precipitation. So next, maybe I will go and find for precipitation to find a summation of precipitation for wet season. So the procedure are very similar. I will find the summation of precipitation data for December 2019 up to March 2020. So I will select the output directory. So this is a precipitation. And this is basically the precipitation for wet season. Yeah, so next I will go and find precipitation for dry season by just finding a summation of precipitation data from June 2020 to July, I mean to September. Precipitation. For August. So I'll select output directory. And save. So next I'll go and find the summation uh, of learn of data. So the procedure is the same. I'll go to last calculator and find learn of data. It is here. So I'll start by finding summation for all learn of data that fall under wet season. So I start by data for December 2019 plus January 2020 plus February plus March. Then I would save this, this in Lanoff. So this is a Lanoff for wet season. Then I'll go and calculate data of uh, Lanoff for dry season by just adding data for June July, uh, August, and September. Then I will save this file to a directory for data use. So up to this uh, case, we have left all with the list water storage, but the list water storage have different way of finding summations. So basically what we need is we need a change in terrestrial water storage. So to, to, to find a uh, terrestrial water storage that it, it is in wet season, we simply have to take data for December 29. I mean, the data for March 2020 and minus the data for December 2019. And if we want to get uh, a summation data, as uh, that is a change in the list water storage for dry season, we have to take data for September 2020 and minus the data for June 2020. So we have to, to find a change and no summation as far as the list water storage is concerned. So to get the list water storage for wet season, I will simply take a data for March 2020 minus data for uh, December. And 20. So for this case, I'll be able to get a change in the list of water storage for 
for wet season. So I'll go and save the output file. This is the list of auto storage. Then it's the list of the storage for wet season. So I'll save, this is the output. Then I'll go and, and find the list of auto storage for, for dry season. So simply I will check the list of water storage for September. Is this one? Minus the list of water storage for, for June. So it depends. Here we, we have to find the change in the list of storage. So it depends on the months that you are working in. If you are you are you want to find the water budget to component over the yearly interval. So to, to get the change in the list of water storage annually, you have to, to, to take data for December minus data for January in that year uh, so that you can get the change in the list of water storage. So I'll go and save. This is the data for, for dry season. So these are the outputs. So our main outputs uh, must be eight we each each water budget component uh, must have two data that is for wet season and dry season so i will move all other layers that we have no we have no use so as you can see i have one left out with one two three four eight layers and up uh, Apart from all these layers, I have the Popo Liver Subbasin file, of which is the most important file that I'm going to estimate amount of water that is present. So the next step is to calculate and uh, like to overlay. As you can see here, the data overlaid on the map, but in the I can say in the absolute value or attribute table of this data, each, each data of its own attribute table. So we have to concat this 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 layers to be able to to be overlaid on a single data source so we will use a so-called zonal statistics in order to merge data that is available in limpopo liver basin and all this water budget component have to be overlaid the, the, the absolute values have to be overlaid so to to check the attribute table of, uh, on any data in qjs you have to right click and select uh, attribute table so as you can see this is the attribute table, but this is the analysis of those water budget components. So I will remove this data so that you all can see how can we able to concat these two layers that is in Popo, liver basin share file and other, and all of those layers that represent water budget component. So I'll simply move this layer so that we can be able to, to see how can we add on ourselves So this is the original attribute table of Limpopo liver basin. These are the original attributes that came with the shape file. But also these water budget components are in luster format. So if you want to see the attribute table, you can just use this feature to identify features. So if I click on this box, you can see the representation of that data. So the next step, is to concat this data, which is water budget components. We have to concat it with Limpopo liver basin. So we'll use a process so called zonal statistics. So I can simply search over this processing toolbox just to, to easily find it because there's a tons of processes in QGIS. So I will open zonal statistics which is a tool that will be helping to concat these two days, these this eight layers that are water budget components uh, in this limpo polyva basin. So last layer, I will start by concatting each layer with limpo polyva basin. So under this option, you have to input the last layer. And as we know, we have eight last layers. So I will start with uh, evapotranspiration for dry season, which is this one. And make sure under the vector layer containing zones, you have to select the import polyver basins. When you say zones, zones are these sub basins. We, we consider this as a zones. 
So we expect to get a concat of data that is disaggregated of all these zones. So if for this case we want to disaggregate, uh, we want to, to, to concat data for evapotranspiration of a limpopolyphal basin, we expect to get data that is concatted over all sub-basins. So make sure under the output column prefix, you identify a column name because this data will now appear, this data for evapotranspiration will now appear on the attribute table for limpopolyphal basin. So I can I, I must put uh, I, I, an identifier so that I can be able to identify each column. So for this column, maybe I can say it is evapotranspiration for dry season. So under the statistics to calculate, I want to calculate a mean. So it depends on which statistics you want to, to calculate. But for this case, we have to calculate mean. So why mean? We want our data to be disaggregated by zones. And when I say zone, I mean these sub-basins. So if you see on this map, let's say this is a, a zone one or sub-basin one, there is a very, there is a lot of boxes. So if we find the mean, we can get a very good representative uh, of evapotranspiration for dry season for the sub-basin instead of getting a summation of it. So that's why I choose a mean. So it depends on your use case. So after that, I, I click run. And for, the, uh, for this moment, data for evapotranspiration for dry season will be available over the attribute table for Impopolyva Basin. As you can see, it is here, evapotranspiration for dry season, which is a mean data. So I'll go and do this for all layers. So I'll just open zonal statistics and select evapotranspiration for wet season. So I'll name this is evapotranspiration for wet season and run. Then I will change and select precipitation for dry season and change column prefix. Precipitation for, this is for dry season. When we are interested in with mean, so I will learn. Then I will select precipitation for wet season. Then I will learn. Then I'll go for learn off for dry season. This is a learn off for dry season. I will learn it. Then I'll go for learn off for wet season. Then run. Then I'll go for telestial water storage for dry season. Then I will learn. Then I'll go for telestial water storage for wet season. I will learn. So up to this point, all the data have already been concatted with the attribute table for the Limpopo liver basin. As you can see, we have all the mean value of all water budget components. So as for now, we already have absolute values that represent each sub-basin. So this name, each law represents each sub-basin. So if you want to, to understand which law represents which sub-basin, you can just select on any law you want. And when I minimize this table, you can find a sum of sub-basins highlighted in yellow. So this column represents this sub-basin, so you can be able to, to, uh, to visualize, to understand how these sub-basins are valid in terms of these water budget components. So up to now, the next step is to go and calculate absolute values for water budget components, but the main aim is to, under, uh, to be able to get the totals that is the total amount of water that is available over the Popoliva basin. We have to understand how much water, how much water is lost uh, due to transpiration. We have to get them in billions cubic meters so that can be help water resources, maybe engineers to be able to plan well for the larger basin. So the next step is to export this uh, attribute table to be able to, to be executed in Excel format. So I will export this data as a CSV file, which uh, it is well known that it is, it can be executed uh, using Excel. So I'll just light click on the Limpopolyva basin, of which I will be able to export the attribute table for Limpopolyva basin as a CSV file. So you can find the format, whichever format you want. So I want to open the file using Excel. So if you want to, you know, maybe how to use Python, you can choose maybe your JSON. You can choose uh, whatever you want so that you can be able to, 
to execute data analysis. But put in mind that the data that will be produced under this process, it will have to be absolute values. So I'll go and select output directory. So maybe I will save in the desktop. Maybe I can say GLDAS outputs. So after that, I don't want this output to be appear on, on a QGIS, so I will uncheck this, this tab, I mean this box. But if you want the output to appear over QGIS, you can just check, but put in mind that we have to open that file in Excel. So if you open it in QGIS as well, you will not be able to edit it over Excel. There will be a collision. So I'll just uncheck that box. So the next step is to, to open the file in Excel format. So I have to open the file in Excel format. So this is a file. It is very similar as what we have seen in the attribute table as we opened it in QGIS. So maybe let me share the Excel file so that you can avoid touch on how it appear. Hope you are able to see my Excel table. So this is a sheet that I just exported and they exported in Excel just to easy uh, some calculation, but I could be able to calculate all the calculation to be able to get the total amount of water, budget components that is available for import using using QGIS, but is somehow hectic. So to reduce the load, it is easier to do that in Excel. So make sure you have absolute values that uh, accumulated in mean and in other you have to drop off so for example we have evapotranspiration for dry season which is a mean value we have evapotranspiration that is count so we can we can remove this layer because it has no use then we can remove also the sum make sure you have only mean values so we have evapotranspiration for dry that is mean we have evapotranspiration for waste season which is mean precipitation for dry which is mean precipitation for wet which is mean runoff then we have runoff for wet and terrestrial water storage for dry and wet season we all are in mean value okay i forgot one one thing we have to to find an area of each subbathing so i navigate back to to qgis we have to calculate the area of each subbathing for example, this is subbasin one. We have to calculate the specific area curve for the subbasin. So it is very simple. I, I have to navigate over the attribute table. And to calculate area, you have to talk editing. You have to enter in the editing mode so that you can edit this attribute table. So the only process that is has been used to calculate area from the shape file is to use an attribute calculator. So I, it, it is this one, I can open field the calculator so that I can be able to calculate area cover for each sub -basin. So I'll open this one. So I expect to label my column as area, which it is in millimeter, uh, millimeter square. I mean, it is in meter square, it is the area. So the default, the default SI unit for estimating area in QJS, it is in millimeter, it is in meter square. So if you want to, to change this SI unit, you have to go to setting. But put in mind, if you just find an area for any data, it will be in meter squared. So I expect to get the data in a format of decimal. So I select decimal number. So output field, maybe I can put it 20 with a precision or a decimal process of, uh, of two. Then to be able to get a functionality for estimating area automatically, I'll go to geometry. Then I will select this, this, this operation called dollar, dollar area. So this is a functionality that is used to calculate the area out, uh, uh, autonomously using the geometry of the shape file. So if I click, I'll be the new layer will be I'll be added. Okay, but I uh, one of one of the mistakes that I, I undertook is 
have just selected and commanded the script to, to, to estimate area from only the subbasin. So before estimating area, be sure you have not selected any layer. So I will unselect this layer so that the system can understand that the area for all subbasins are needed. So I will just update the formula by just navigating to area and change. So as you can see, all the, the, the value for areas have been estimated in the all line meter cube. So I will untog the editing so that I can turn off my editing mode and save my changes. So for this point, I can be able now to export the file into Excel. I will tell why we need to estimate areas for subbasin. It is most important because we, we, without area for specific subbasin, we cannot be able to get the volume of water that is available in each subbasin. So I will navigate to, to the directory where I saved my file and open those files in Excel. So we are, we are unable to see. Yeah, I'm putting it right now. I hope you see my Excel sheet. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So these are the output. So as I said, you have to make sure that you have a seasonal water budget component that is absolute values. And they are, have to be in millimeter per month and have to be mean values. So you have to delete all the data that are not I mean. So I'll move this data that accounts and summations and I'll be left all with mean value, mean value for seasonal water budget component. So this data are in millimeter per month. So simply I'll maybe find average so that I can get familiarized with how maybe evapotranspiration dry season are changing. What is average evapotranspiration for dry season? So I'll just find average for all seasonal water budget components. So as you can see here, so the overall in purple liver basin evapotranspiration for dry season is ranging between uh, 70 millimeter per month, but evapotranspiration for wet season, it is around a 254 millimeter per month. So this is just for getting yourself familiar. But the aim is to get the total amount of water that is available. So to get the, the total amount of water, of what I mean, is very simple. I will start by calculating the amount of water that is lost uh, to do evapotranspiration dry season. So I'll copy this title and maybe paste it here. And I will write a formula uh, that will be using to calculate the amount of water, the volume of water that is lost through evapotranspiration dry season. So I'll select the data for evapotranspiration, the mean evapotranspiration for dry season. But remember this data, it is in a millimeter per month. So I have to convert this data so that I can get volume. So I will convert a millimeter uh, to meter by multiplying to 0 0.001. So up to this now, this data, it, it is already in meter. So to get uh, this data in meter cubic, I have to multiply by area of the specific subbasin. So I'll multiply it by specific area, which is this one, and be able to get the, the volume. So this is the amount of volume that is lost through evapotranspiration dry season over the first subbasin for in purple liver basin. So if you want to know which subbasin is that, you have to name those, those basins over QGIS. So maybe the first subbasin of in purple liver basin lost around a two a 24 millions a meter cube of water to low level transpiration in dry season so you can just fill it on so that you can be able to get a amount of water that is lost over each sub basin and if you find a uh, sum you can be able to get how much uh, how much water is lost of the purple liver basin low for transpiration dry season so this is a is a figure that this is the amount of water that is lost by evapotranspiration dry season so i can go and finding amount of water that is lost by evapotranspiration 
but specifically any wet season. Procedures same. After I have to select uh, the mean evapotranspiration that is lost during a wet season. But remember this data I in millimeter amounts, so I have to convert first to to meter. Then I have to multiply by area in order to get volume. So it is this one. Then I will drag it off in order to get absolute values. Then I will find the sum. So this is the sum amount of water that is lost to low evaporation translation of a wet of a wet season. So I have to do this over all these water budget components. So as long as I have already do it, maybe I can share the Excel as uh, the Excel sheet that have already I calculated the volume of water that is lost to each water budget component. So I expect to, to get an output file, something to be unlike this. But OK, this can be a trick for you to understand. Maybe we can estimate one, one by one so that you can get a touch on how to go you know, how to go about it. So I'll open again my Excel sheet. Okay, so I will calculate individual uh, volume, specifically what, for, for all these water budget components. So I'll go a bit little fast so that all can, you can be able to see how to calculate and how to align the final steps. So I will select, I start with evapotranspiration for dry season, then I will multiply by 0 0.001. Then I will multiply by area to be able to get as a volume of water that is lost to live evapotranspiration dry season. Then I'll go for, for wet season. Then I'll multiply by 0 0.001 times area. It is that one. Then I fill it down. Then I'll go for precipitation that is for dry season. I will multiply by 0 0.001 times area. Then I will fill it down. Then I'll go for precipitation for wet season. This is one I'll multiply by 0 0.001 to be able to convert it to meter and then multiply by area to be able to get meter cube. Then I'll go for runoff for dry season. I'll multiply by 0 0.001 times the area of the specific site basin. Then I'll fill it down. Then I'll go for runoff for wet season. Is this one? Then I'll multiply by 0 0.001 to be able to convert to meter. Then I'll multiply by area to get meter cube. Then I will fill it down. Then I'll go to terrestrial storage for dry season. I will multiply by 0 0.001 times area. Then fill it down. Then I'll finalize by um, estimating volume of water for terrestrial water storage by multiplying for 0, 0, 001 times area and fill it down. So this data are in meter cube, current and meter cube. So in order to understand well, I can find the summation for each water budget component. So these are the, are the summations of water budget components. Maybe I can highlight so that we can get a touch of it. These are the data that are in meter cubic. So these are the volume of data, uh, the volume of water that is available of each water budget component over the entire Limpopo river basin. So if we, we can be able maybe to analyze a little bit, please, we have. There is a, please. Hello. Yeah, there is a mistake on uh, water storage. Water storage. Dry, yeah, and the dry and the wet season. Similar, the same, same things, if you can see. 
Okay, maybe I've shared a long screen. So can you screen? Can you see the new Excel sheet now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> so these are the total amount of water that is present on each water budget component. So for example, we have over 26 billion uh, meter cube of water that is pleasant, that is lost uh, through evapotranspiration dry season. As compared to wet season, we have almost a one, one, one day, <laughs> sorry, we have almost, I, I, I can say much a high amount of water that is lost through evapotranspiration in wet season. So to, to simplify all these absolute values, we can convert these values that they are in meter cube to billions cubic meter. And for your information, and it is well known that it is the most used SI unit in water resources. So we have to convert this data to be in billion cubic meter. So it is very simple. We have to multiply this data times uh, 10 power negative nine in order to get this data in billion cubic meter. So I will fill this down. So this is a BCM, billions of cubic meter. So from here, you can be able to arrive with a very good and informative information that can help uh, to understand the variations of water, volume of water specifically for each water budget component. So from here, yeah, you can finalize and say we uh, over the over the dry season in Limpo Polyva Basin, over 26 billion a cubic meter of water is lost through evapotranspiration. So it is very similar, like in in wet season, almost over one one 110 billions of cubic meters lost through evapotranspiration in wet season. So you can analyze all. Uh, water budget component and be able to get a touch of how much uh, how much water is lost, how much water is gained, maybe to do precipitation. So, for example, if we analyze the precipitation uh, for wet season, there is almost a 148 billions of cubic meter of water that is produced through precipitation, as compared to dry season, only 13 billions of cubic meter of water is produced in, in dry season. So up to this point, you can be able to uh, to provide any evidence to the water practitioners, water resources engineers for the specified deliver basin. So this is information that can be helped to understand how can you undertake a water accounting, how can you distribute water, how can you understand if you have uh, you have, you have that water that can be shared to the public and whatever. So this is a much informative information and it is recommended to be utilized for the basing that have data scarce. So maybe I can finalize by saying that this data is robust and optimal to use only if there is a sub basings or liver basings that of data scarce, but if you have a more robust ground truth data, it is better to, to use ground truth data, or you can maybe use this remote sensing products, but make sure you validate all these informations to be able to, to attain a high level of accuracy. Yeah, so up to this point, I think I have reached to an end. We have made the target, but the target where we, we expect to estimate the volume of water that is available in Popo River Basin for each water budget component. So these are the water budget components, precipitation, evapotranspiration, runoff, and terrestrial water storage. So from now, this is another expertise. This is a water resources expertise. So you can be able to, to analyze what is the meaning of this 26 billion cubic meter. How can you utilize it so that you can distribute water efficient and effective. Yeah, so for this point, maybe I can stop here and welcome if there is any question.
Hey, Mr. Frank, thank you. So my question is, is, is about if I can do or I can perform this analysis using uh, RTGs, is there a problem? No, there's no problem. RTGIS is almost similar to QGIS. The only difference is QGIS is open source. But in QGIS, it, you can perform all these steps with QGIS. There's no problem with it, yeah. Okay, thank you. You can perform this process with any QGIS, any GIS software, you know, LDAS, you know, any GIS software that can be able to read the special data, you can perform this, the process, this process. You can replicate the procedure maybe, but the tools maybe and the processes, they can be different, but the procedure is the same. But as far as uh, ArcGIS is concerned, and see, even the name of the tools are similar because in QGIS we have raster calculator and in ArcMap in ArcGIS we have also raster calculator. We have what we table in QGIS, we have what we table in ArcMap. Yeah, but in LDAS maybe it, it's a lot of, it, it's a bit different. We saw these two are QGIS and uh, ArcGIS. So is there another question? Yeah, so if there's no other question, I will I will share the presentation. Maybe I can share it back so that I can I can demonstrate what to do for the tomorrow session. So the tomorrow session will not be the live session, but it be it, it it was allocated like your time for doing exercise and as far as this session is concerned the exercise is to to replicate the step as appeared on this tutorial this is a complete tutorial that can show and demonstrate you step by step until you are live uh, to the to the final product, which is a volumes uh, of water for each water budget component. So I'll share this, I can say manual tutorial so that it can guide you. So if you want to, to understand more, if you want to learn more, if you want to uh, interact more with this data, you can do. This is, I can say robust manual. It cover everything, it show you step by step and it is very easy to follow. So you can be able to produce, and if you you are successful to uh, produce a volume of water for each budget, water budget component, you can submit your file over the, the platform, alternate platform, so that I can be able to see and link if you have done so well. Yeah, but also if you have understood, you can be able also to replicate this step to to find water budget components, basically volume of water for your own study area, for your own sub-basins. I also can tweak those temporal resolution, but for our case, we have just used two season, wet season and dry season, but you can just choose to estimate water budget component annually, interannually, even for decade, it, it is a matter of your own use case you can do. Yeah, so up to this uh, end, I think uh, I have done my side. Maybe Primrose, if there's anything before we wrap up. Uh, nothing from my side. Maybe for everyone to make sure that you fill in the attendance sheet for today. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I think this mark the end of live sessions maybe we'll be interacting over emails and maybe the future sessions yeah thank you everyone for joining thank you thank you thank you very much thank you so much
Thank you.